William, what's wrong? Beauty fall is here and winter's coming and it's dark and dreary and there's hardly any color. Oh, no, no. Look, there's plenty of beautiful color and we'll share it with you next on Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. We're at Portland Nursery on Stark Street, where they and all your local garden centers are just filled with fall color for your gardens. And coming up on the show today, we are going to be taking you to a hazelnut harvest. We'll also be showing you a product that will help with fall cleanup. But coming up first, planting spring bulbs. Fall is the time to plant, especially bulbs that come up in the spring. So I'm with Sarah from Portland Nursery, and so Sarah, I think people kind of forget that to get them beautiful in the spring, you have to plant bulbs now. I am so guilty of that. <laughs> I miss it like almost every year, and I work here. I, but I'm like, oh, I'll plant them later, I'll plant them later, right. and then it's like January. So. Uh. Um, a good memory for everyone or a good reminder for everyone. Yeah, so come get them like really <laughs> soon um, because there's nothing better in spring um, than seeing the bulbs come up oh, because that's beautiful. when it tells you that it's spring. And, right. Um, so that's why I picked crocus for the first ones. Oh, I mean, sure. they don't bloom for very long. It's so short lived, but to see them poking their little heads up, that's when we're just like, ah, spring is here. It you is, know? it is. And a white one would be so beautiful on our gray days. Yeah. Really lovely. Yeah, I mean, it's lovely when there's a little run. They can be great in pots too, but in the ground, I, I really love them. Um, daffodils as well. I mean, those are just with their yellow oh, cells, so bright. just <laughs> so springy. So I love, um, big clumps of daffodils as well. And then you picked a short one, which I love because they're only gonna get like maybe 10 inches. So mm -hmm. if you're gonna put them in a pot, you don't have a big space, that would really be nice too. Yeah, they're great in a pot and they're really cute for tiny little vases or yeah, something. Um, but the big ones as well have, a, you know, they really hold their shape sure. um, and kind of stand up and, uh, so big daffodils are also great. I, I can't say the same for tulips as well. Like I feel like the taller they are, lot they get a little floppy. They can, sure. Um, so I do tend to pick kind of shorter tulips. They last a little bit longer. All right. Um, and you have some pretty ones here, an orange one. Yeah, I thought that would be a nice complement to kind of the lineup that we have. And um, I mean, there's so many different kinds of tulips and I love those in a multicolor. Like I'm kind of a segmented color kind of person, but mul multiple color um, tulips looks really great. They and always go together. So I, well, and I picked the orange and the purple because the I think that's a good color combination, mm -hmm. but also the double tulips are, I mean, they're so hard to beat. They're just beautiful, um, nice and full. So I feel like, you know, you can get all those really cheaply in the ground right now. Whereas right. if you buy them in the spring, they're not going to do as well and you're going to be paying a lot more for them. And plus you can get more variety now. There's so a many to more. choose from. You have great displays here and at the Division store right. because there's an extensive amount of them because in the spring there aren't. Right. Yeah, in the spring, you know, you just kind of get what's coming in and they're sold so fast because yes, everybody definitely. wants that spring color. Um, and, you know, they're so easy to do um, this time of year. All you do is really stick them in the ground. I mean, preparing, <laughs> preparing soil helps. I have tested that. I tried planting some in clay soil before yeah. and it, it didn't go so great. But, um, you know, get some, some loose soil. Um, okay. a, verb, a bulb fertilizer really helps. And then... Um, I always look at the spacing on the tag where you can find it, but you were just saying that actually the, the rule of thumb is about two and a half times the height of the bulb. And I was Definitely. just comparing that to the back of the tags and it, that's true for all of these ones here. So It is, and it's, I think that's an old, old one and that's the only one that I remember, but you always have the tag to remind you too. It's yeah. always nice to read the tag. We tell everybody to read yeah. the tag. <laughs> Well, I think you chose such a great idea here to have a lots of different colors. I think people forget about that. Yeah. You don't have to have just mono colors. And really to come out to the Portland Nursery on Division and on Stark Street to see their lovely display and get some bulbs in so that you have that pretty spot of color in the spring. Yeah, I mean, right now is the time for the best selection and don't do what I do and wait till the last <laughs> minute because you, you, you want to get what you want. Bulbs, I mean, they'll keep coming forever. So. Definitely. Well, thanks so much. Thanks. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. 
I've been a Capital Subaru customer for 15 years and one of the main reasons is because they treat me well and I want to shop local. The service department is excellent and I always feel like I'm taken care of here. In fact, they call me now even after I've driven off the lot to remind me to come in and get my car washed. That's service. One of the reasons why I like coming to Capital Subaru, actually, they have this, the dog area and I can just walk my dog around the whole area and we can enjoy the outside. I got it my way on the parkway. Every year, trees fall or break, causing property damage, power outages, and injury. Now is the time for Bartlett Tree Experts and Collier Arbor Care to get your trees ready for the extreme conditions ahead. Our free consultation will help to spot the signs of potentially hazardous trees. We can help address problems before they occur. Whether it's trees or shrubs, we can help you get a healthy and beautiful garden. Collier Arbor Care and Bartlett Tree Experts, providing environmentally safe tree care since 1907. Locally grown, fresh from the farm, stylish and sustainable, your dream yard starts at Al's Garden and Home. Our biggest sale of the year is on now. You'll find huge discounts throughout the store. Save big on perennials, trees and shrubs, houseplants and more, including patio furniture and pottery. Don't miss it. Our biggest sale of the year is on now. Al's Garden and Home in Woodburn, Sherwood, Gresham, and Wilsonville. Here's the secret to a beautiful, long-lasting deck with the warmth of wood. Don't use wood. Upgrade to composite decking. Fiberon is available in five distinct styles and 20 gorgeous colors and never needs sanding, staining, or refinishing. You'll spend more time enjoying your deck and less time maintaining it. Stain and fade resistant, composite decking won't decay like wood. And no need to worry about splinters or nail pops. For wood looks that last, you can choose long-lasting, low-maintenance composite decking. Learn more at FiberOnDecking.com. Well, I am in the kitchen with Joelle, and we are at Smithberry Barn. And Joelle, this is a great time of year for baking apples, and it's really a very simple process. You've got a couple of different ways to do it, so let's jump right in. All right, well the first thing we're going to do is we're gonna do a single serving apple, a baked apple. You don't have to just make one, okay. but you can. <laughs> um, today we're going to make one, but this is a special um, apple baking dish that we sell here in our store, made locally by a local artisan. Nice. And what we're going to do is we're going to core out the center. So I have my handy apple coring tool. And I have to say, this looks different than my apple core at home. This is a new kind of design, isn't it? A little bit it? fancy. Yeah. So you, it's very sharp and sturdy, which we like. Um, and then once you're finished with it, you just pop it open and out a comes the core. A lot easier than using your finger trying to get them out of those old easier. ones, which I've done. <laughs> and then it sets right on that little dimple in the nice. bottom so it doesn't fall over and you can fill it with your topping. Uh -huh. And so today our topping is, um, you can mix your topping, you can do any, basically you can do anything you want. Okay. Um, today we're going to do some brown sugar, some oats, some hazelnuts, a little bit of cinnamon, and then we're going to add some crystallized Ooh, ginger. That, that's a new one, huh? Yeah, <laughs> which I've chopped up here, and so we'll add that And you sell the crystallized it. ginger at we Smithbury do, Barn as well? Yes, we sell the cinnamon, the ginger. Um, and you can really go all out because you have like uh, some uh, dried cranberries there. Things do. like that work as well. We have some really great local dried cranberries. Nice. And so whatever you either have in your pantry or whatever sounds good to you that you want to mix together, um, it's pretty foolproof. And so we're just tossing the ingredients. And how does it smell? It smells delicious. The trick is to get it in the center. You can also core a little bit more. I just did one uh, one time through, but you could do it a couple of times to make that hole a little bit bigger. Okay get more topping in that way. And then pack it down. A little bit falling around the edge is fine. It, and they're beautiful too. That's what I love about baked apples. The last thing we're going to do is we're gonna put a little bit of butter on the top of it. Actually, that's not the last thing we're going to do because I forgot about our cider. Um, you oh. wanna have a little bit of moisture in the bottom of it um, so that that can help with the baking. And usually you would use water, but I think the apple cider is a great idea. Exactly, so this time of year when we have the fresh apple cider, yep. might as well use it. You can also use water, but we like the cider. It's a little bit more flavorful. So just a little bit in the bottom. 
and then that's going to go into the oven, 350 degrees, for about 30 minutes. It depends a little bit on the variety. Today we used Honeycrisp. Uh -huh. They bake really well. They're great for fresh eating. It's one of everyone's favorite apples. Um, certainly good for whatever you want to use it for. And how would you tell then? Do you like stick a fork in it? They're really tender. You stick a fork done. in it. Nice. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> so we'll get that into the oven. We're actually going to make another one as well, a different style of okay. baked apple. And so we'll put them in the oven together. Nice. Now, this, this looks even easier to me. This is even easier to me. Um, basically, what we've done is we've cored the apple, cut it in half, laid it flat open. You don't need any you know, special dishes or anything like that. Um, what we're doing special with this one is we're actually adding a little bit of our own farm jam on this. This is our raspberry rhubarb jam, so a little bit of dollop in the center of each apple. And you also have a, a low sugar? or we do. A low, Yeah, yep, that's We a have a really one. good low sugar one if you're trying to keep the you know, sugar content. This is a really healthy dessert, really, yeah. aside from a little bit of butter in the topping, but um, it's a great, healthy now, dessert. Now, I noticed that there seems to be two, uh, a core out, but a little circle also. How'd you do that? Right, so I just took a little melon baller and I scooped a little bit of extra out of the center so that we would have a okay. little bigger well for the ingredients yeah. there. And then this is our crisp topping, oh, so we're, we're making basically a, an apple crisp without doing all the oh, slicing okay. and cutting. Um, so we have all of our ingredients for the apple crisp. We have some oats, um, almost the same as our other topping, but a little bit of flour in there to hold it all together and a little bit more butter. So you're going to add the butter to that. And all of this goes in? All of that goes in. And then you've got to tell them about what you have in your hand there because that is such a cool thing that you actually sell here at the store. So we're going to be doing some fresh nutmeg and we have our micro plain type uh, grater and we just grate the fresh nutmeg right into that. And the great thing about that Joelle is this kind of nutmeg lasts, I mean you're probably going to have to use and use and use to use it up. It does last a really long time but it's the best freshest it is. flavored the nutmeg. Is delightful. You can't beat it. So then we're going to take our pastry Are you blender. Do this? You're going to do it. <laughs> I'm going to test you and see how you do. I need a, um, am I failing or nope, succeeding? Nope, you look good. <laughs> can tap a little bit of that butter off and keep going. And this really is just a basic topping for apple crisp. You can do this in your Cuisinart. I didn't feel like messing up the Cuisinart and, you know, running that motor. But, yeah. Um, it's easy enough to do it this way. Now, let me finish mixing this up and we're going to be right back. Sounds good. Now, that, that looks great. I'm assuming that's ready to go we're, on top of them. We're ready to go. So, we're just going to start... I like this because it's almost like an individual apple crisp. It is. We would serve these individually with a uh, scoop of ice cream is the best way. A little bit of apple cider there to help with our steaming just like we did with the other one. A little bit falling off is fine. We can scoop it up at the end and drizzle it over the top. Okay, well let's finish these up and uh, we'll be right back. So, Joelle, these absolutely look delicious. How long were they in the oven for? About 30 minutes. We tested them with a fork, and they're nice and soft and crisp on the top and ready to eat. And then this is a great example of if you wanted a single serving, these dishes work so great, whether for yourself or for like a specific fancy dinner. Exactly. And then the multiple ones in a baking Right, a, in it's a just an dish. easier way to do it. You yeah. don't have to have special tools. And you have, you have a lot of varieties of apples growing here, don't you? We do. We have about 20 different kinds of apples and about five uh, varieties of pears. Wow. They start in August and go all the way through late October. Uh, we pick when they're ready, you know, we pick, they're ready when we decide yeah. that they're ready. And so it varies depending on the variety. And that is such a great thing because that's on your website, exactly. which is smithberrybarn.com. I love that because, you know, sometimes every year it's a little different. They, they get ripe at different times, so it's a great thing to do. There will also be uh, certain varieties that we don't have this year that yeah. didn't produce well, or the timing's a little bit off. We also um, do a, a handout that tells you what we recommend each of the varieties be used for, and then a little bit of um, just tips and tricks nice. and how to buy them and what to use them for, easy snacks for kids, things like that. Well, it seems like every time we come out to Smithbury Barn, we, we walk away with one more delicious dish that we get to prepare. So thank you so much, Joelle. For more information, go to gardenland.tv. We'll click you over to their website. Thank you. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. Is your garden in need of refreshment? 
Hi, I'm Sarah, and there are plenty of things in bloom at Portland Nursery. Come check out our beautiful fall color to perk up your garden. At Portland Nursery, we consider fall the second season, and the gardening opportunities are endless. Establish next year's trees, replace lettuce and greens, or get a jump on onions and garlic. Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people, on 50th and Stark and 90th and Division, or at portlandnursery.com. Fall is a time to think of planting and planning. Planting new plants now will help them get a jump start on next year. Black Gold All Purpose can help your plants get ready for winter and next spring. Formulated with a blend of natural and organic nutrients, it contains everything your plants and spring bulbs need for a happy and healthy start. Look for Black Gold All Purpose at your local garden center or nursery. Black Gold, all the riches of the earth. Nestled in the oaks of the Willamette Valley is a nursery that is truly exceptional. At Out in the Garden Nursery, you will find a vast array of shade plants, ornamental grasses, and hardy perennials. Hurry, our season-ending sale is going on now. Get that perfect plant at a great price. We offer over 100 types of perennials. Plus, we offer the best in personal attention. Out in the Garden Nursery, where we grow great gardens one plant at a time. Fall in the Northwest is the best time of year to plant with warmer soils and cooler evenings. A time to spend with family and friends. Fall is a time to celebrate. To decorate. And to enjoy the colors that are only found here in our area. Fall is a time to come to Garland Nursery. And let us show you all that fall can be. Garland Nursery, inspiring beautiful and bountiful gardens. It's the time of year when we start uh, harvesting hazelnuts in Oregon, and I'm here with Andrew from Columbia Empire Farms. And Andrew, I, I wanted you just to go over the process, because it really isn't just going out and picking a bunch of nuts off, is no, it? No, <laughs> it sure isn't. So the way the hazelnut harvest starts here in Oregon is nature. Mother Nature takes the nut from the tree, we drop them naturally, and step two, as you can see here behind us, we have a machine called a sweeper. And the sweeper is going to take the nuts from either side of the orchard floor and bring them into a nice windrow. After that windrow is created, we'll have a, the actual harvester unit that comes in, that's pulled behind a tractor. It'll run over the windrows of nuts, pick up the nuts, blow out as many leaves and as sticks as possible. Those nuts will hit a conveyor belt, come up behind, dump into a cart, and then from there we'll put them into totes and they'll go to our processing plant. So in that process, is it is it just one time? That happens once a year? Do you do it two times or is it just a one time it thing? It is generally, patience is key in hazelnut farming. <laughs> we want to let as many nuts fall as possible. Yeah. That way we're only making one pass. If it's a good year and lots of nuts are dropping, there will be certain fields that we'll go back and make a second pass <laughs> off. But And then once you get them in, in those totes, where do they go from there? What's the process? It's going to go into our washing and drying plant. It goes through a series of about three different washes. Wow. Um, it's going to remove as much dirt, debris, leaves, rocks, anything that might be getting in there that's not supposed to be in there. Um, after it's dried, or excuse me, after it's washed, it's going to go into one of our two hazelnut dryers. Um, large dryers, it's going to take about six to eight hours per load for that dryer load to be complete. Uh, and they've not been cracked by they're they, still they're, they're still in the shell they're still in shell at that point after it's washed and dried um, that's when we start the sizing process and what what does that mean sizing process sizing so five five to six different sizes of hazelnuts um, all the way from giant all the way down to small huh. they're still in shell at this point and we want to be able to get them separated as well as we can by size before we go to the crack out process. And then this is actually, this is how they end up once all that's done, because after you crack them, that's when you decide to package them up? Correct, correct. So here in front, we actually have the in-shell hazelnut that was harvested about five minutes ago, sitting right here in this dish. The final process is behind it here. Uh, we do everything from raw, which is great for baking, to roasted salted, roasted smoked, and we also uh, make candies. 
out well, of hazelnuts. I, and see, you took the words out of my mouth because I was going to ask you about that. <laughs> so I think what we're going to do now is take a break and we're going to run down to where you do a bunch of other stuff with these wonderful hazelnuts as well, all right? Absolutely. Great. Well, now I am in a whole different part of the farm. I'm with you, Linda, and this is where Andrea had said that there was other stuff you guys did with the hazelnuts here, and this is where that happens, right? It is. This so, is actually our chocolate confection room. So tell me then, you, I see two different kinds of chocolate. You use mm -hmm. both dark and a light. Mm -hmm. We use both um, the dark chocolate guitar and milk chocolate guitar chocolates nice. on our hazelnuts. Nice. Mm -hmm. So. Talk to me about them. What, what do you got going on here? Okay, well, um, we do, uh, after we take the hazelnuts from the field and crack them, then they're ready to be roasted and enrobed in chocolate. And oh so goodness. these are our dark chocolate enrobed hazelnuts. And those are just the whole ones? The whole ones. Nice. And they're wonderful with Pinot Noir wine, um, served alone, snacking, um, but they're really an elegant uh, treat to serve with um, all kinds of different nice. foods here in Oregon. And this almost looks like a brittle of some sort. It is, it's a, an efficiency. We take all of our Oregon hazelnuts and sometimes we have a few that are whole and broken and sure. we make a hazelnut brittle and enrobe that in a milk chocolate and uh, we make hazelnut toffee. Well, and I have, to, <laughs> looking at this here, I'm seeing a lot of a poop on the table. Uh -huh. Tell me, because well, like, like right here, <laughs> reindeer poop, what is that about? Well, we actually take our chocolate covered hazelnut toffee and we renamed it in all different ways. For Christmas time, <laughs> we do reindeer poop and gingerbread poop and all different kinds of poop. And we do bird poop, squirrel poop. Oh my um, goodness. Yeah, lots of different poop on our farm. <laughs> but no, no poop actually exists in here no, though. It's just no. good hazelnuts and chocolate, isn't it? Delicious hazelnuts and, <laughs> and chocolate. And this reminds you, you know, it's not too early for Christmas and you can order at That's your right. website too, can't yes. you? Yes, um, we have a website, ColumbiaEmpireFarms.com. Nice. Um, and you can see the full selection of all of our products there. Well, you know, it's always a great delight for us to live in Oregon and to be in a, such a state that has so much things going on in farming and agriculture. So for more information on this great place, you can go to gardentime.tv. We'll click you over to their website and then you can pick up some reindeer, ginger poop, or even the most famous squirrel poop all for yourself. <laughs> Thank you so much, Linda. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. Our customers are looking for the most modern appliances generally, and we always seem to find that with Standard. If we go to a big box store, they may have one or two of the manufacturers, but they don't have the full spectrum. Any product we could think of needing for our home, we know we can find it here. If we have a specific request from a customer, we know that we can go beyond our specifications and find exactly what they're looking for. Since 1947, we set the standard. Standard TV and appliance. Little Baja is your source for a whole lot of terracotta and concrete, too. From bird baths and benches to Buddhas, bears, and fountains, plus the exclusive Baja chimney, we have an amazing variety of the finest in terracotta and concrete containers. Come check out our selection of statuary for any garden theme or setting. So for something for the garden, deck, or patio, come see us at Little Baja on East Burnside in Portland. Find us on Facebook, too. A destination farm and garden market featuring the very best each season has to offer. Smith Berry Barn offers seasonal farm fresh fruits and vegetables and specialty herbs and perennials. Visit the historic barn for distinctive gifts, gourmet foods, and homemade milkshakes. Come join us for our annual Heirloom Apple Festival. Sample apples on a day filled with tons of fun activities for the whole family. Centrally located off of Shoals Ferry Road between Sherwood and Hillsboro. Smith Berry Barn, growing good taste from the ground up.
Well, it's a change of season and it's fall in the garden. So there's lots of chores to be going on. So there's a product called Leaf Hopper that's gonna really help make the chores go much faster. I'm with Mari, who's the developer and designer of this Leaf Hopper. So how does it work? How does it make our, our life so much easier? Well, it makes your life so much easier. <laughs> I, um, I designed and developed it because I was having some issues with dizziness when I did the uh, handfuls mm, sure. of up and down motions, the handfuls of leaves into your yard and garden breed bins and bags. So I decided to develop something that was going to alleviate that. I basically designed this garden tarp. You rake on your materials. Okay. We have a we have a few br branches here, but normally it would be grass clippings leaves. and leaves. Sure, you just rake and place it on, and then okay. we have an example over here. Let me grab that of how it works. Of how it works. So you simply just rake and place it on there. And fold it over. Fold it over. Clasp it with the Velcro, and then you simply just lift once, nice. and up it goes. It totes over your shoulder. You can have your hands free to open up gates and carry your yard tools. And then you simply just walk it over out to your front yard, to your bags and bins, oh, and then like you simply just funnel it straight in. No more up and down motion, no more dizziness. Easy, one, two, three. And it's really nice because sometimes you don't have a partner out helping you with the chores exactly. and it's only yourself. So really exactly. that's a one person job. It's a one person job. And it, so we say fill, fold and funnel. <laughs> Easy as one, two, three. And really you can use it for other jobs in the garden too, like if you're spreading mulch. Yes, I love it for my mulch. I can put it out when I get my yard, with my mulch delivered. I can put it right on the tarp. I can, just like that, I can haul it and then I just simply funnel it straight around the garden beds in, in and out through the plants, around the trees, around the fence lines. I can do it with pea gravel. I can do it with um, bark chips. So, and it actually makes a beautiful lined edge. So it's perfect. It is nice. And it's really that less work, it's less um, damaging to your shoulders, to your body. Yeah, I've, I've actually had a lot of people tell me how nice it is because they're usually pulling um, tarps, heavy tarps with all the leaves on it. And so everything, or they're p picking up the buckets and the bins, yes. which everything is lower back. So this is more of an ergonomic way. Toting it over your shoulder helps alleviate that back pressure. And, uh, and yeah, it works really well. And now where can we get it? We can get it at Owl's Garden Center, we can get it at Portland Nursery, or you can, you can buy it online at easyhalltarp.com. Uh, so you've heard it from the designer. I mean, it's a great product and we really all need some help in the garden this time of year. So go to gardentime.tv, we'll click over to that website and you can find out all about it. Thanks, Mari, it's a great one. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching today. And you know, there's so many nice days in the fall. Enjoy your gardens, or better yet, go to a garden center and pick up some new plants for your garden. And if you would like to re-watch today's show or view some of our past shows, we always invite you to go to gardentime.tv. William and I thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week here on Garden Time. It was the summer of my freshman year. I was 14 years old when I got really interested in doing a kid starter project and I decided to help out 150 kindergartners by raising a school supply drive. A lot of kids, they feel like they can't make a difference, but really any kid can make a difference through kid starter. Kid starter mobilizes students to make an impact for issues they care about, providing them with resources and coaching to impact local and global causes. Kid starter, developing future leaders through service and action. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.